beneath the surface of the American West lies a violent legacy, a land shaped not by wind or water, but by fire. In this video, we'll descend into tunnels forged by molten rock. We're gonna be brave. We're gonna be brave. Walk the scarred remains of fiery eruptions. If you put your ear close, you hear like a bubbling and a hissing. And uncover the secrets of one of Earth's most dynamic landscapes. Holy crap, that's a gusher. <laughs> <laughs> This is the story of volcanoes past and present, and the incredible places they have left behind. Today we find ourselves out in the middle of the Mojave Desert once again, trying to seek out remnants of the past. Whoa. <laughs> Our journey begins in the Mojave Desert, a land of sand, silence, and surprising volcanic history. Driving around the Mojave, it might not occur to you that you are driving through a land formed by the forces of volcanism but seen from high above, the evidence is more clear. The landscape is a scarred surface, reminiscent of a distant volcanic moonscape. Welcome to the land of cinder cones. The deeper in you go, a picture starts to form as you come upon deep black escarpments of rock like you'd see on a Hawaiian island, and seemingly out of place rocks spread all about the ground. Here's what we've really come to seek out today. Cinder rock. I think this is a cinder. One of the products of cinder cones. I'm done with the sun. It's hot. We're gonna head back to Slim and we're gonna go see way better stuff than this. So if you see those two bumps there straight ahead, I think those are more cinder cones in the general direction we're heading actually. And maybe here we go. Here's part of the road where there's some volcanic rock exposed. Some cinders. So maybe that's evidence that we are indeed going to be driving on a lot of volcanic rock today. This is not a big deal so far though. So far, easy peasy. And finally they come into view. Bumps in the landscape beginning to rise above you as you draw near. Alrighty, we're gonna drive up the side of a volcano here. These cinder cones are the remnants of Strombolian eruptions, short, explosive bursts that fling molten rock into the air. Over time, these fragments accumulate to form steep-sided cones. And out here, they are everywhere. Eventually, you may even come upon remnants of these violent hills, cut in half by man, revealing the spilled guts of these ancient mounds. And we're really getting to see this thing dissected, you know? I'm almost afraid to get too close to the edge of this thing. Wowzers, look at that, look at all of that. Rock. Cinders. At Aiken Mine, humans have carved into these cones, not for treasure, but for a humble practical resource. Volcanic cinders. Used in landscaping, road construction, and even in traction control on snowy roads, these fragments of ancient eruptions now serve everyday life. These cinder cones I read um, are relatively short-lived for volcanoes. They kind of crop up, explode, eject, this kind of thing. I think this rock had a lot of gases in it and stuff, and there's a lot of pores in it. Probably why it's uh, so light. It really is very light. So one might say on this episode that I took you inside the heart of an old volcano. Thank you. 
And beneath the surface, even more surprises. Whoa, yeah. I think there's a tight squeeze and then we're, it'll open up. So there is light in here and it's beautiful. Oh my God, look at that. Lava tubes like this one formed when rivers of molten basalt cooled at the surface, creating a crust, while lava continued to flow beneath. When that flow stopped, it left behind a hollow tunnel. So yeah, this really, I think, hopefully ties into our theme today, the volcanic theme, a the cinder cone theme, because this would have been formed by lava at some point coming through this tube. Stepping into one feels like walking into the Earth's memory. The Mojave Desert has many secrets, but none more humbling than its mighty cinder cones. Though now silent, come find these reminders of a hot-tempered geologic past. Traveling north, we reach Lassen Volcanic National Park in Northern California. Site of one of the most significant volcanic eruptions in modern American history. Between 1914 and 1917, Lassen Peak awakened violently, spewing ash, gas, and pyroclastic flows. It was a vivid reminder that even in the 20th century, the ground beneath us is not always stable. Luckily the steam's blowing upward away because the stink's going with it. It's got warmth to it. Um, here it comes. Can you guys see the steam blowing at it? Is it fogging up the lens? Today you can find lots of evidence from this period strewn about in the wake of the volcano's destruction. Many large boulders, effortlessly tossed out of the volcano like wads of paper, can be seen today, reminding us of its not-so-distant violent past. But it seems though, even though this thing was ejected a long time ago, it seems like the 1915 eruption got it to this location. And that's a nearby resident, and they, it talks about how they were amazed that rocks could be moved like this. Distance is like that. Lassen is a composite volcano, or stratovolcano, built from layers of hardened lava and volcanic ash. To think that, you know, I'm standing here at the base of a plug volcano, and that it will erupt again, and nobody really knows when, um, it's kind of a scary thought. It's the same type of volcano responsible for Mount St. Helens and even Mount Fuji in Japan. Today, Lassen Peak is quiet, and you can hike all around it in many peaceful, beautiful settings. So are you digging it so far? But Lassen's days of eruptions are not quite over. It's still considered an active volcano and will likely erupt again. Although estimates consider this unlikely to happen soon, the park is actively monitored for seismic activity. In the shadow of mighty Lassen Peak is an area of the park where you can see clear evidence of activity looming not far beneath the park's surface. Ah, look at this. Bump as hell up close and personal. We made it. I love the smell of sulfur in the morning. Nearby, Bumpus Hell offers another kind of spectacle, a hydrothermal wonderland of boiling springs, steaming fumaroles, and colorful mineral deposits. Here, heat from a magma chamber just miles below the surface fuels a cauldron of chemical reactions, an alien landscape that's entirely Earth-born. You can see, smell, and sometimes even feel the warmth of what lies below. And yeah, the smell is pretty pervasive down here. It's at once beautiful, thrilling, and formidable, a landscape to be awed and respected. 
Back in the 1800s, the man who gave Bumpus Hell its name got an unfortunate lesson in respecting this land, a lesson modern visitors are wise to learn from. Kendall Van Hook Bumpus was a pioneer and prospector who stumbled upon this surreal, steaming landscape in the 1860s. When he brought others to see what he'd found, he accidentally stepped off the solid path and broke through the fragile crust into a boiling mud pot. The scalding thermal waters severely burned his leg, so badly that it eventually had to be amputated. The incident became infamous, and the area was soon dubbed Bumpus Hell, in grim recognition of what happened. It's a stark reminder that beneath the beauty of these volcanic wonders lies a dangerous and unpredictable force of nature. So as you can see, Lassen is a place of incredible beauty, where the Earth's raw power is on full display. But it's also a reminder that nature here is untamed and unpredictable, a lesson we would do well to remember as we explore its wonders. So far, most of our exploration of volcanic landscapes have been above ground. But in Northern California's Lava Beds National Monument, the land tells a quiet but equally powerful volcanic story. Formed by shield volcanoes with slow-moving basaltic lava, this region is riddled with more than 700 lava tubes, each one a frozen moment from a time when the ground flowed like liquid. It's very abrasive <laughs> material. I think I'm gonna be doing this a lot today probably, especially as we go into more difficult caves. Inside the air cools, footsteps echo. These caves aren't carved by water or wind, but by fire. The caves at Lava Beds National Monument are formed by flowing lava. As molten lava moves across the ground, the outer layers cool and harden while the molten interior continues to flow beneath. Over time, the flow of lava drains away, leaving behind hollow tubes and chambers. These lava tubes are like natural pipes, shaped by the cooling process of the lava, and their unique formations can range from narrow, twisting passageways to large, open caverns. This is spectacular. This is the uh, Carlsbad Caverns of Lava Beds National Monument, I think. Today you can tour many of the caves in the region, ranging in varying levels of difficulty. Oh, here's a duck walk. Quack, quack. And look, it's like spikes, like you're in an Indiana Jones movie. We tried several ranging from the easiest. It's just a paved trail and it's smooth. You know, as even as it can be going down a slope. To some in the moderate range. Yeah, my hesitancy to do the more advanced caves is right there, I see it already. You could lose your way. There's a lot of caves that have, you know, twisting like figure eights and other areas where you could walk in circles. And they warn me about that in the, uh, the pamphlet. So it's like I'm using some basic stick to the left on the way in and on the way out on the right on the way out. Just be sure to bring a good light with a backup. And be mindful of where you step. That rock smarts if you take a tumble. Although they have to make the floor a little bit smoother and make it easier for people like me to walk on duck crawl. Now you see the hazards. I think the camera's okay, miraculously. But I took a tumble on sharp volcanic rock and it sucked. Every cave seemed to offer something unique and no two are alike. If the caves at Lava Beds present too much of a challenge, Subway Cave, located south of Lava Beds, offers one of the most accessible lava tubes in the region. As you walk its dark passageways, you're literally tracing the path of an ancient lava river. That's short and sweet, but pretty cool.
Our final stop takes us to one of Earth's most famous and infamous volcanic systems, Yellowstone. And today I'm standing outside the north entrance of Yellowstone National Park. This isn't just a national park, it's the caldera of a supervolcano. Formed by a series of cataclysmic eruptions, the last of which occurred 640,000 years ago, Yellowstone breathes through steam vents, geysers, and boiling mud pots. This one is active enough to make its own waves. You just watch this thing, it sometimes splashes up higher than the edge there. The park sits over a hot spot, a plume of magma rising from deep within the earth. Over time, this hot spot has created massive eruptions, reshaping entire landscapes. Today, it powers iconic features like Old Faithful. I think it's doing it. You got it, you got it. Oh my God. Holy crap, that's a gusher. <laughs> oh my God. A geyser whose punctual eruptions mask the intense geothermal energy boiling below. You'll traverse through alien-looking landscapes you never thought could exist on our planet. But just like the lesson Mr. Bumpus should have taught us, watch where you walk. One misstep could lead to a very bad day. Though the risk of another super eruption in our lifetime is low, Yellowstone remains a place where Earth's internal forces are always at work. It's a landscape we'll never forget, and perhaps the greatest reminder of the immense destructive power the Earth contains beneath our feet. From the deserts of the Mojave to the geysers of Yellowstone, the American West tells a story written in fire. Each crater, cone, and cave is a chapter, a frozen moment in geologic time. These places aren't just scenic, they're sacred records of our planet's power, resilience, and change. Standing in these places, you feel it, the awe, the humility, the knowledge that the Earth is alive, and always, always moving. If you enjoyed this journey through volcanic landscapes, consider subscribing to our channel. We've explored caves, climbed cinder cones, and stood beside boiling springs. And there's so much more to come. Let us know in the comments which volcanic site amazed you most, or where you'd like us to go next. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next week.